Hello everyone, this is Sean Taylor, Field Application Scientist Manager for BioRide in Canada. And in this video, we will describe how to perform a purity analysis of proteins in complex mixtures. The first step in the process is to assign the lanes and bands of interest. And this is well described in a previously recorded video, Image Lab Software Densitometric Analysis of Gels and Blots, which is posted on the BioRide YouTube channel. We've already defined the lanes in this purification that we performed here. Now, the next step is to assess the bands. So we click on the lanes and bands tool. We've already defined the lanes as we can see. If we go into bands, we can either detect bands or add bands, but given the fact that these mixtures are fairly complex in the impure forms, we'll just add bands. So we can pick bands of interest to assess purity. So let's assume that this band and this band are bands of the protein of interest. And we'll go ahead and select a band in the same range of molecular weight going right across. So we're, what we're doing is we're trying to assess the increase in purity as we go from crude lysate loaded on a column to the elution profile off one or two columns as we get to the very end where we have nicely purified proteins. We've run a molecular weight marker in lane one and we've already a set picked the bands for each of the molecular weights. So we can also assess the molecular weight of our protein of interest. Once we've picked the bands of interest, we definitely should go up into the lane profile to just be sure that we've selected the correct width of each band. And this again is described in, in, in the densitometric analysis video. So I'm going to click here on the lane profile. And I'm just going to make sure that I've selected the correct width of my band of interest in each lane. So that's from lane 10. And we can see we do need to be sure this is done properly in order to get a, a good assessment of the increase in purity as we go through our purification process. So I'm doing this very quickly. Just You just uh, pick the flanking blue bar on either side and then it's very straightforward to be able to click and drag so we're selecting the correct peak to assess the band. Now of course this one doesn't look like there's much there so I'll just place it here. And we'll go through selecting each peak so this is now completed for all my lanes. And if I go to the lane one, I can see the markers nicely selected. So, so this is fine. So I have my marker lane as well. So now that I've selected the correct lanes and bands, and of course this band here is not the appropriate band. It's a little bit lower than the other ones, but there really is no band here. To, to pick at the same molecular weight. So now I'm going to click on the analysis table. So if all you're interested in is just getting a purity assessment of the protein, then it's a simple matter of clicking on the analysis table and of course, assuring that background is properly subtracted. And again, that's done using the lane profile tool. And again, that's described in that previous densitometric analysis video. So if I click on the analysis table, and I can scroll down, I can actually see the data as a lane percent. So the lane percent result is the background subtracted volume of the band of interest. So lane two band one. So this is the background subtracted volume of that band with respect to all the other bands in the lane that was selected. So in lane two, our band of interest represents 2.6% of the density of that lane. We can see that as we go down through the lanes, the percentage is fairly constant because this is all just crude lysate. But then as we go into our purification, when we get to lane six, we're at 
19%, lane 7 is about 20%, lane 8 it, it dips a bit but that's just because it's the, it's the flow through. And then we get up into the 59-60% purity in the last two lanes for our band of interest with respect to the other bands in the lane. So of course the last two lanes are not fully pure. We can still definitely see other bands in the lane and that makes sense because this probably is a his tag column and his tag columns don't typically purify proteins to 100% purity. That this may these two bands proteins may require running on another column to eliminate some of the impurities, but we can definitely follow the, the purity as we go through. We can also use quantity tools and quantity tools. You can do relative or absolute quantification. So if I do relative, I can select a bend to say, okay, I want this bend to be the bend that is referenced to the other bands. And if I click in the analysis table, my reference band is set to one, which means it's dividing the adjusted volume of all the other bands by the band in lane eight. So the band in lane eight is divided by itself to give a value of one. And then the adjusted volume of all the other bands is divided by the band in lane eight. So in lane seven, I have three times more protein than in lane eight and in lane nine, I have 16 or 17 times more protein than in lane eight. So that's another way to assess the increase in purity of a protein from a particular lysate that you're starting off with. We can also do absolute quantification. So absolute quantification, we can select bands that we know are of a particular quantity. Sometimes molecular weight markers offer this. So if I were to click on this band, I could tell the software that this band is, let's say 20 nanograms. And this band here, we could say is 40 nanograms for argument's sake. And then this band here, we could say is, let's say 60 nanograms. So we've, we're creating, in effect, a standard curve, and we can actually assess the fit of this standard curve by clicking on the standard curve here. So this is our absolute quantification standard curve, which actually gives a pretty good fit. And then we can click on the analysis table to assess the absolute quantity of our unknown proteins. Now, of course, some of the some of the proteins will say not available because their densities don't fit on the standard curve that we've assigned. So it's important that the standard curve proteins that you use are all within the density range. They flank the density range of all the proteins that you're interested in assessing. So some proteins are NA on this list simply because they are outside of the range of the standard curve. But this permits you to get an absolute quantity on the standard curve. And then you can export this table and perform more sophisticated analysis downstream using Excel.